when I was coming up and I was trying my best to get into the music industry, Donald S. Passman wrote a book called Everything You Need to Know About the Music Industry. Right. That Big was book. Bible. Right. He came from the lawyer's perspective. He was a lawyer. Right. You are coming from a completely different perspective because you're more on the ground. You're more a part of what makes the industry move. So I we, want, so I, you know, I would love to see this book become the Bible, not just this year, but for years and years to come. People are like, you have to pick up how to win big in the music industry, in the music business. Yeah. For you, <clears throat> when you were writing this book, was it? all just your personal experiences or was it you just looking and saying to yourself if i had known these things in the beginning i would have gotten a lot further a lot quicker like what was yeah. your mindset going into this yeah so let's be clear this is not an autobiography by any means it's not about clinton you know what i mean it's it's, it's about the tools and the strategies this is the modern day guy to help the aspiring artists and navigate their way to win big in the industry. Look at the book you just talked about um, is over 20 years old, right? So like the world has changed tremendously in the past five years, 10 years, let alone way back then. Plus that's from like, again, from a lawyer's point of view, right? So there's a lot of legalities, very complex book to understand. It's much thicker. You know, there's like a lot more things that, that look, what do people care about nowadays? How do I get famous? How do I make money? How do I build my brand? How do I go viral? Right? So it's like, that's really all you care about for the most part. Right? So what this is, is it shows you all of that. However, I'm feeding it to you. Like I'm putting medicine in the baby food. Right? So tricking you that you're getting the knowledge that you need while I'm giving you the information that you want. Right? So, you know, all of like, I think it's like, man, some of these chapters are so killer bro, but, yeah, like if I had this information, I even say it in the intro, I go, yo, it's a good thing I went through all this shit because I can feed it all to you now. No one had this information when, I, when we were coming up, right? So it's like the only thing worse than having no goals is having too many goals. That's one of the chapters, right? Um, you know, stop waiting for some magical moment that doesn't exist. And what that means is like you got all these people that are like, Oh, I got this killer record. I got to wait for this right moment to happen at this right time when this right thing happens and this right thing. Da, 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 da. No, go put it out, man. That one song, that one idea, that one action could be the thing that that one person you needed to hear or, or find out about it hears it and changes everything for you. And I give examples about that. You know how many producers right now are kicking themselves in the ass because they made some beats and they, they only wanted Jay Z to be on it? Jay Z never got the beat. Three years now, they're still sitting on that beat. The beat wouldn't even match anybody nowadays. It's old. And somebody else came out with a beat that sounded like you're always like, wow, if only I got that beat to Jay-Z. Why didn't you get it to some no-name guy and break some new dude and you would have been known. And now guess what? Jay-Z's like, who made that beat for that guy who's number one? Oh, Sean Prez did? Let me call him. You know Correct. what I'm saying? Like, and they don't know that, man. They're waiting for some magical moment that doesn't fucking exist. Like, make people buy into you not just what you're selling. You know, that goes back to the whole networking thing. Stop trying to knock down brick walls with snowballs. You know, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's not working, fucking change. You know what I'm saying? It's like people just sit and complain. Yo, if these people didn't hate on me, if only this happened. It's like giving Al Bundy Pope high stories. If Coach put me in the game, I would have put <laughs> He didn't. All right, so it's over. What are you going to do now? You know what I'm saying? It's like, one of my favorite chapters is mastering art. What art stands for is automatic resourceful thinking, right? And that's something I've done my entire life. I don't look at problems as problems. As soon as a problem happens, the first thing I think about is how do we fix it? What's the resolution? Because the problem already happened. We can't rewind time. But I can fix the future. So it's like if, this, if my house burnt down right now, I'm not going to sit for weeks. My house burnt down. <laughs> I'm going to be like, yo, my house burnt down. How do I get in the house? How do I resolve everything? What did I lose? How do I, you know, find what I didn't lose? That's just how my, main, my brain operates. And if you can remove emotion to detach emotion to the business that you're doing, then you can act much swifter and smarter because you're not, you're not buried and boggled down by emotion, right? So it goes back to, you know, when you were saying 
when you hit trying times, right? If you don't prepare for failure, uh, then it's gonna hit you a lot harder. If you build a business model and there's no room for failure, or you're not predicting or projecting any failure, then like you're gonna fail even harder than you would if you planned for it. For example, a, a simple, easy way to understand what I mean by that is, um, what if you lose your job? What are you doing today in the event you lose your job? What does the average smart person do? They're putting money in savings to protect themselves in case they lose that job, they have money to pay their rent and eat, right? That's a smart way to plan for failure. You know what I mean? So it works like that in any business, whether you're like, what if that employee quits? What if my partner dies? What if my car doesn't work anymore? What if my health starts to deteriorate? Like, if you don't plan on any of these things, then you won't be prepared to deal with them accordingly, thus causing that problem to be intensified because you didn't plan for it. Make sense? Absolutely. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.